So I'm about to become that dude that goes to the cinema on his own. Hey my friend, close your eyes please. What is the story? What is the story? So I have this little ritual. Every Wednesday I take off as a kind of me day. So I go hard Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Weekends are for the family and me to do some man things. But on a Wednesday I like to go to the cinema. I'm like the dude who sits in the cinema on his own. Kind of weird. Um, why? Well, one, I like movies. I like films. Um, Two, on an evening we don't really watch movies because we we'll fall asleep too early. Um, three, it makes me switch everything off, like phone's got to go off. I've actually got to sit there and have my mind tuned into this movie, which for a man like me and you who produce shit, it's kind of difficult to switch off sometimes. So this is just one of the, one of the, the, the techniques, tools and hacks, that, albeit a very fucking simple one that, but I haven't said that. So I'm, um, I'm not sure if I told you this. Oh, that light's terrible. Not sure if I told you this, but um, just tell I'm getting used to this camera thing now. I'm not sure if I told you this, but I'm back in my own kind of office in the managed office unit because I'm really struggling to get things done at the home office. Um, I get distracted, people keep showing up, but mainly I get distracted about this and beware, you might need to get the world's smallest violin out right now, my friend, because, uh, I don't know if you can see that. That there, right out there, is kind of what I get distracted by, see? Like, there's quite a lot going on out there. That's a scene, a big rock with a cannon on the end. Um, so yeah, quite a quite a distracting view of the northeast coastline. Uh. <laughs> So what do you want to do today, Nina? Um, go to Nana Lynn's. Go to Nana Lynn's. And what do you want to do when we're there? Uh, play with toys. Play with what? Toys. And would you like Daddy to play toys with you? And which toys do you like playing with? Trolley. Trolley? What do you like doing with the trolley? Going shopping. Going shopping. And then what, do you, what would you like to do after Nana Lynn's? It's just me and you today, so we can do whatever you like. Uh, what else? We could go home and play maybe with your kitchen. Yeah. And you could cook for me. Yeah. What would you cook for me? Um, pasta. Pasta? Well, I love pasta! <laughs>
we're back now. Oh, rascal haircut, we're back now. Had a bunch of fun, I can't stop looking at the, I keep not looking at the lens. We are back from daddy date. Daddy daughter date date. And I think I may have done the job. We played Play-Doh, we played cafes, we played shops, and this is the result. So you might be wondering, in fact you definitely are, why the fuck is Paul Mort doing a TV show? You might even be wondering who the fuck is Paul Mort with a potty mouth and the crazy fucking haircut and the tattoos and all that shit. Why is he so arrogant? Well listen, here's what I've kind of figured out is that there are a lot of men who are like me, who feel kind of alone, like, like nobody gets it, who are kind of... None of the friends are self-employed, um, they're out building the business, and they seem to have kind of given everything up to build this business. Like, so maybe they've let their lifestyle slip, like maybe they, they kind of stay at the office for a little bit longer because the kids annoy them when they get home, maybe they're just arguing with their wife all the time. Maybe they just, they, they kind of tell little white lies that escalate into bigger lies. Um, yeah, and I think, I just get it. Like a year ago, I felt exactly like this, like, oh, nobody gets it. I kind of played the victim a little bit. And I built this life where, from the outside, I looked like I was doing really well. Like, killing in business, on fire, load of followers on Facebook, Twitter, social media, everybody liked me, I, I love defending people, I love calling people out, etc., etc. But inside, I was fucking dying. Like, I couldn't wait for the weekend so I could drink some pints and do a few lines of coke. And then I discovered something called Wake Up Warrior. You may have heard of it, you may not have heard of it. Now, that gave me a set of rituals, a set of tools, tactics, strategies, so that I could build a business, but without sacrificing everything else. So I could have this legit business that produced the kind of money that I wanted, because let's face it, dude, you know as well as I do, money makes the world go round. The only people that don't think that are people that don't have any fucking money. That's not me and you. We know how to produce, we know how to make it rain. The problem is the rest of the game. So I have these set of tools and rituals now that allow me to increase my capacity in business, but that also allow me to have a great relationship with my wife. Because let's face it, the next best thing to getting paid is getting laid. I get that. I have a great relationship with my kids, like I get some funny looks when we're in the parking chair because I'm the only dude that's not sedating like fuck in his mobile phone. I'm the only dude that's not on the smartphone. I've managed to get myself in shape again, which uh, I'll tell you right now is very nice. And you're gonna see over the next few weeks, me on that journey of getting in shape and staying in shape. I've managed to build a mindset where I'm not, I don't melt and I don't cave in at the first sign of stress. I don't lose my shit over a little bit of overwhelm. But actually, guess what? Sometimes I still do, and I'm gonna show you that too. So, the main piece of this, the main piece of this show is actually not about really me giving you a ton of tools. I wanna to show you that it's okay. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to not feel fucking amazing every morning when you wake up. It's okay to wanna to drink fucking coffee when you wake up and say fuck everybody. It's okay to be grouchy, it's okay to lose your shit every now and again, it's okay to not be motivated, it's okay to skip your workouts, it's okay to not want to do any work, it's okay to tell your clients to fuck off, it's okay to take criticism personally, and it's okay to have a drink if you want to have a fucking drink. So this show I'm going to let you inside of my life, because I think if you're anything like me, I thought there was something wrong with me. Like I, I, I literally thought this time last year, I was like, shit. There's something wrong with me. Like, why don't I feel motivated all the time? Why do I feel like shit when I wake up? Why do I want to drink on a weekend? Like, why do I not want to go home? Why am I getting pissed off with my kids? Why can't I relax? Like, why when I finish work, why can't I go home and switch off and be present with my kids? Because what happened was I was there, but I wasn't really there. And I know that you may feel like that too. 
So why did I think that something was wrong with me? Well, let's face it, there are a bunch of gurus out there and a bunch of fucking mush cookies and these guys that are drinking the unicorn breast milk and everything that, everything's fucking perfect. Everything's great, everything's amazing. I feel so grateful and I feel so blessed. So I thought there was something wrong with me because I didn't feel like that all the time. I felt like something was missing. I felt like, am I doing this shit wrong? Like I'm producing all this money in my business. What the fuck's wrong with me? So I wanna show you what it's really like because I'm just a fucking normal dude, no shit. I'm a normal dude, I have two GHSCs. I'm gonna show you my town. It's got beautiful views, but it's not the most affluent place in the world. I have normal parents. My dad works in a factory. My mom works in Asda. I am not surrounded by positive people all of the fucking time. There's a lot of negative people around, but guess what? I don't avoid them. That's not the fucking answer. So what I'm gonna show you is what it's really like. And I'm gonna show you that there is nothing wrong with you. I wanna show you that it's okay to feel the way you do. And I just wanna give you an insight in how it doesn't have to be the way it is now. It doesn't have to be the way it is now. It is possible for you to have it all. It is possible for you to produce in business whilst maintaining a body that serves you. It is possible to have a body that serves you and get laid, because guess what? I don't care what anyone says. The better your body is, the more chance you've got of getting it. You know how it is. I want to show you that it is possible to have a great relationship with your kids without becoming some kind of fucking hippie. That doesn't make any money, like one of those household things. I'm not having that, by the way. I want to show you that it is possible to become somebody that can stand like in the eye of a fucking hurricane when there's chaos going all around and not lose that shit. In fact, I'd be the only calm dude there. I want to show you that it's okay to be angry. In fact, in the next video, I'm going to show you what I do to help with my anger. And that's all I've got. But you know what I really get? Like, I get that you think that nobody gets you. I don't know if even that sounds, I don't even know if that makes sense. But I get that you think that nobody gets you. Cause I was the same, like, I used to avoid people. Like I'd avoid parties. I'd basically hide behind my fucking laptop and I'd tell this story. I'd, sorry, I just saw someone that I knew. I'd, <laughs> so I'd tell this story that um, I hated everybody. Oh, I'm not a people person anymore. I'm anti-social. I'm uh, and, it, and it almost became a joke. But inside, I was like, shit, I actually don't like anybody anymore. So I isolated myself so much. And I wanted to show you this because it's important. And I want to show you how much I fucking get the isolation thing. So I kind of thought that it would be cool to show you that, again, I'm not really trying to prove anything, but I want to show you that I'm not full of shit. This is how much I isolated myself from people. This is how much I shut the fucking world out and, again, became a kind of a victim. This is a gym that I had almost built, that I had set up, um, so I didn't have to go to a public gym, like, so that I didn't have to go to, to group training. Like, I used to think I was the man because I was like, I've got this fucking gym where I can train on my own. It's awesome, nobody comes in. And that was, again, almost like bravado. Oh, fuck this, I have my own gym. I don't want to be around people, I hate people. But this is just an example of how much I isolated myself because I just built this business empire and I just became almost obsessed with making money. Now, dude, don't get it twisted. Money makes the fucking world go around. In fact, money is the vehicle to freedom. If you don't think that's the case, this video is probably, this shit's not, not gonna be for you at all. But again, what I'm trying to, what I've proved, the concept that I've proved with the help of various mentors, Garrett J. White, the Wake Up Warrior, Byron Katie, and a ton of other people that have helped me along the, on this journey, because I haven't figured this out myself. I haven't figured this out myself. I'm not gonna take credit. But what I figured out is that it is possible to create that big ass business without letting everything else fucking slide so that you, you end up almost hating your business, you resent it. In fact, you resent fucking everything, even yourself. And from the outside, you look like you're crushing it. From the outside, you look like you have it all together. But here's the truth, bro. Inside, you may be fucking dying. That's a nasty reality. That's a gnarly reality for a lot of people. But in case you haven't realized the thing that I'm gonna keep repeating, I fucking get it. It's not your fault. 
and I'm going to show you some tools that help you get out of that fucking funk. So listen, listen, I'm gonna cut the chase. Why the fuck am I standing here? It's starting to snow. It's fucking freezing, it's dark. I've got a bunch of crazy shit going on behind me. And I've almost been reminded why I'm doing this TV show. It's like, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, why the fuck am I doing this? And if I'm honest with you, I started to question whether I still wanted to do it. But here's the deal. Two reasons I'm here, one, I want to connect, not in a networky fucking, not in a networky, I'm going to use your kind of way, like connect, like reach out to men who feel the way that I did, who are going through the pain that I went through, the lies, the stress, the overwhelm, the hurt, the depression, the anxiety, all of those fucking feelings that you feel like you've got no control over. Like maybe you feel like you're drowning in a sea of negative thoughts and you forgot how to fucking swim. That's why I'm fucking here. Because I, I want to remind you that it's okay not to be okay. It's normal not to feel fucking magnificent all the time and not to feel grateful and blessed and all of that other bullshit that these life coaches and fucking gurus and mush cookies spit. Like, I want to show you my reality. And I want to let you know that you can change this shit. And the second reason I'm here is because I'm hoping, in fact, I'm not hoping, I'm not hoping, at some point you may feel inclined to take this conversation somewhere different. You may feel inclined to take the invitation that I'm going to make to invest in me, to invest in the tools, the tactics, the techniques, the models, the rituals that I personally implement into my life that have produced the results that I've been able to produce across the board. Like, listen, I know you can produce results in business. I was able to produce results in business as well, but at what fucking cost? Now, you're probably the same as that I was just before this video where you're thinking, what the fuck's the point in this? Like, <clears throat> all this money's great, but the shit that comes with it, that wasn't part of the fucking deal. Like, dude, I get it. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm, I suppose this video, I just wanted to remind you of where I'm going with this. Like, why I'm doing it. Why you're watching this. There's only one reason why you're fucking here, dude. Something's not working in your life. I don't know what it is. Maybe I resonate with you. Maybe I don't. But I just think it's about time. Somebody step the fuck up and woke the men of the UK up. Particularly the type of man that is an entrepreneur. That's a producer. That can make it rain but has let everything else fucking slide. That spends his weekends sedated, that spends every night fucking whining on his wife, unloading on his wife when he gets home and then expecting to get fucking laid. So what he does is he stays in the office a little bit longer so he can avoid the kids who are starting to get on his fucking wick so that he can constantly be like this, on his fucking cell phone, checking Facebook, checking emails, texting, WhatsApp, and anything he can to avoid having the tough conversations. And that might piss you off. But guess what, like I said, somebody needs to step the fuck up, slap a few men across the face, and have them wake up. Like, have them wake up, have them fucking rise up if you want. Because I think somewhere along the line, we give up so much and we sacrifice so much to grow these businesses that we forget who the fuck we are. Like, isn't that the fucking truth? Isn't it time for us as men to start acting like fucking men? Because dude, producing in business 
isn't hard for men like me and you. It isn't fucking hard. It's actually the easy part of life. Producing in business. But I'd have you consider that the thing that's missing is maybe you don't feel like a fucking man. Maybe business is the only place you feel like a fucking man, which is why you sedate in the rest of your life. You avoid that conversation. But dude, just because you cover your eyes doesn't mean it's not there. So what's it gonna fucking take? Like, how bad does it have to get? How bad it does it have to get for us before we reach out to other men? Because they're there. Regardless of your story about it's different for you, your town's different, your business is different, your life's different, I'm calling fucking bullshit right now. I'm calling fucking bullshit right now. You're a fucking liar. But I get it. Because I've been a liar too. I built a life of fucking lies. It was built on lies and then I got fucking exhausted. I forgot what I lied about. I was constantly looking over my shoulder. Paranoid as fuck, anxious as fuck, stressed as fuck, playing the story of overwhelm. So that I was so overwhelmed, I went home every Friday, fuck it, beer, coke. That's the way it was. And then I tell more lies about how drunk I was. The biggest lie that I really told, and the biggest lie that you're probably telling right now is that everything's okay. Ah, oh, everything's fine. When again inside, you know that something's missing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But I'm gonna say it again. It's time for you to step the fuck up and show the world who the fuck you really are. Because you're more than your business. You're more than your business.